Well, welcome to the channel, I'm your host, Fubarama, and in today's video, I'll be going over how to complete the Kayo Perico heist from start to finish in a pretty reasonable amount of time without really stressing all too much. I have made two speedrun videos in the past on how to do the Kayo Perico heist, and both of the videos are moreover how to just rush a lot of these tasks as fast as possible with relative ease. In today's video, I'm just going to be showcasing how to complete the heist in a fairly fast amount of time, and that's about it. It's not going to be speedrunning, just how to complete the heist and everything included, all the setups, without really worrying all too much. I really think that's the most important way on money grinding, is that you can chill, maybe watch a YouTube video on the background or something like that while you're completing it, because that's normally what I'd be doing. I'll be watching YouTube while flying my plane over to Cayo Perico right now, because it's a lot easier. So, yeah, hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. I haven't really been making too many money videos on the channel as of lately and been sticking to a lot of car content, unfortunately, because there's not many money-making methods I haven't covered. I mean, once you get over the special cargo, the vehicle cargo, which I've already gone into, I've gone over the acid lab, how much it makes per hour, I've gone over plane, I've gone over just about every business and talked about every business in depth. At this point, there's not a lot of money-making strategies out there that I haven't covered, so that's the only problem with the channel right now. I might make some revamped reviews on money making, but apart from that, I'm uh, I'm probably just going to stick to car content and maybe the occasional money making strategy or my top businesses, stuff like that. Let me know if you want to see more money making strategies in the comments down below, but I'm going to really have to try and think of some interesting ones because I've already gone over a lot of them. Kayo Perico is still by far the best money making strategy in the game as a solo player though. As I've talked about in the past, usually what I'll do, and that's how I have so much uh, just cash sitting in my account right now, is I'll usually just do the Kyle Perico heist once, log off for the day, and then log on maybe two or three hours later once the cooldown's done, after I've finished doing whatever my jobs are, and then I'll come back later to the game and I'll do the heist again. I mean, very easily can make two to three million dollars a day doing that. It only takes about two hours of your day. And uh, and then you're easily going to be making in a week 14, 15 million dollars in your GTA account. I haven't really been grinding on my broke to billions account because I already own over 500 million dollars worth of cars and stuff like that. So at this point, I've already earned so much money in GTA, it's pointless for me to really earn any more on the broke to billions account unless they add a new DLC, which I'm kind of hoping they do. That was an interesting interesting uh, little cut there. Uh, my character just parachuted. But we have finally made it to Cayo Perico, and this is where we can actually start talking about doing the heist. Now, the first thing I should say, which I should have added a little bit earlier, to do all of these setups, for the most part, I like to use the Sparrow. A lot of people like the Oppressor Mark too, but personally, I just think the Sparrow is easy because it always spawns next to you when you instantly call it in. There's only a two minute cooldown. Sparrow has unlimited missiles and it flies really dang fast. Plus, you can land it inside of your Kosatka. So with all those things combined, I really like the Sparrow, which is why I'll be using it for today's video and the majority of the video. But now that we have made it, oh, over to Kaya Perico, all we need to do is start making our way to find out what is exactly here. So we're going to get on the motorcycle and make our way over to the one location over here. Hello, how you guys doing? Just going to make my way over here and let's see what we have in this location. Do we have coke? Yes, we do. We have coke and weed. Not bad at all, actually. So let's just take a picture of this real quick so I don't forget. I might forget, I might not, but there you go. Okay, and send. Well, that was pretty easy. We got the coke scouted. Let's see if there's anything in the hangar, because now that we've gotten that covered, that's actually pretty dang easy. So let's go over towards the hangar, and if there's coke here, we've already basically gotten everything we need. Oh, maybe I should look where I'm driving. Here we go, squeeze through here. Come on, please have some. Oh my god, we did. That is such a lucky spawn. It also looks like there might be some up top, but that's all we need is two spawns, I'm pretty sure. So this is all we're going to have to do is make our way over to the airfield, get these two spawns, and leave. There you go. All right, well, that was pretty dang easy. Now all we have to do is make our way over to the rest of the area, which is over towards the main pavilion. So let's keep on going. Now, when it comes to doing this route, I'm going to be honest, I have not done this heist in quite a long time. So when it comes to doing this route, uh, I'm going to have to go a little bit off-road over here, as usual, and then we're just gonna go off the entire road and squeeze up here. 
It's pretty dang easy to do this. You can do it around that first guard as well. Oh, well, you can also just beat your face on a on a tree branch, but unfortunate for me. Let's get back on the bike and keep on going. But it's pretty simple to do this part. You're just gonna go around here. I'm pretty sure just about every YouTuber shows this. You're gonna speed on this way, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off to this little secondary road over here. This is what normally I like to do. It's pretty dang easy, and yeah, that's all you do. So now we're just gonna squeeze through here, badonk, and keep on going. Let's cut around this corner. So this part coming up is where it gets a little bit tricky because of the fact of where this guard is. So the first guard is very easy to get around. You're just going to drive this way and get around it. This second spot can be a bit tricky. The best way to do it is just to try and launch yourself up this. Unfortunately, you can see for me there, I uh, kind of hit it at a weird angle. So a little bit unfortunate. We're just going to try and do it one more time and see if we can get over it. So let me, uh, let me go back. The problem is this camera is looking at me as of right now. So let me get around the camera. There you go. Not too bad. It turned around. So let's just try it one more time. Let's go this way and let's see if we can get over it. Hoo there you go. Not too bad at all. As you can see, it's pretty dang easy to do that. Once again, don't stress it. Don't try and just yeet over it the first time and make the mistake and get caught and have to go all the way back to the beginning. But you can very easily just take your time, get around that camera and keep on going. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get around this guard over here, pretty easy to do. And we're just gonna start going off-roading a little bit through here. Once again, very, very easy. So there's a lot of people here obviously, so I'm just gonna try and cut through around all these guys. You can see the Jeep here, but obviously the Jeep can't look behind itself. So we're just gonna squeeze here and that's it. Very easy to make your way up the mountain. Honestly, I don't even remember the pathing half the time. I just drive away from the guards and then once I see the hill, I get over here. So we can see that there's no guard at where the signal box is. You'll notice that there's no guard whatsoever here, which means the signal box is always going to be at ground level. So we can see it right here. If there is a guard at the bottom level, that means the signal box will always be on the second or third story of the tower. So we got kind of lucky. Now all we have to do is simple math. We have to get 59, uh, obviously the four. Let's see. So that would be three. I'm going to do the three here for now. And then we can do the eight and... That should work. No, wait, no, I'm big dumb dumb. Oh, I don't. All right, there you go. That would be 38, so that wouldn't work. Okay, so it seems like we need the 4 to go to the 10. There you go. The 8 would go here. There you go. Okay, little bit of math braining to do, and we've been able to hack the computer. Pretty dang easy. Connection successful. Okay, so now we're going to hack onto the cameras pretty easily. Thank you very much, Pavel. Let's get on sights here and let's take a look at what we have. So I don't need to care about any of the other targets. The only thing I might take a look at is what is in the main camera room. But no, I don't even need to because the two targets we're going to get, the Coke, are already there. So pretty dang easy. We're just going to take a look in the basement what we have, which is the Ruby. So there you go. Ruby necklace, not a bad target at all. Not a great one either, but it's better than the Sin Sumito Tequila. So I will take it. So now what we need to do is go to online, find a new session, invite only, and that's it. It's very easy easy to do this little trick and now what the game's going to end up doing is going to it's going to spawn me back in my Kosatka this is what I do all the time, and it saves me a huge amount of time. Now, not only that, your Kosaka spawns you in the nearest location to where you were. So, as you can see, it spawned me right in LSIA, which is very easy. Oh my god, could anybody else call me on the phone? Holy! <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it spawns me back in LSIA, and now we can start doing the setup. So, we've already done the scoping mission. It's very easy to do, and it takes a very little amount of time. No stress whatsoever. Now, we're just going to go and start doing these. So, we've already done Gather Intel. Now we're going to do approach vehicles. We are going to do the long fin, which is the easiest of the bunch. So let's see if we can do that right now. Why is it not letting me do this? You can... What? No, I don't... Is it because of this? No, I don't... I want to decline... Brett, what? Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think my game is just bugging out. All right. Approach vehicles, long fin. What? I'm so confused. Okay, so let's make our way over to the Vinewood Police Station. Pretty dang easy. As I said, I like using the Sparrow over the Oppressor. It's pretty dang easy to use, and it'll get the job done pretty fast as well. 
So uh, let's keep on going over there. I don't know what my helicopter's homing onto, but hopefully nothing too important. All right. Now the Vinewood Police Station is a bit of a further one away. It's on the other side, but it's not too bad. What you want to do while you're doing this is go to vehicles and find your Phantom Wedge. So when you have your Phantom Wedge or whatever, what you're going to do is you're obviously just going to park your helicopter, whatever you're driving, a little bit away, so you don't get the police on you. As soon as you get over towards the police station, the cops are going to be on you. So I like to park a little bit away, like here. We're going to go to vehicles, and we're going to call in my Phantom Wedge. So this should be fairly simple. Come on, where's my Phantom Wedge? Now, you don't need to own a Phantom Wedge for this. If you go over towards the docks, you can also steal yourself a Phantom Wedge. This vehicle over here... Uh, will always be a phantom wedge, so you can also just do that, but personally, I just call in my own personal one. It's very easy to do, and it saves you a minute or two when you're doing this. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a bit ahead, and we're going to put on my brakes. I'm going to reverse directly into the trailer, running over these new skies in general. There you are, pretty dang easy. Get out of my way, and that was easy. So now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way just about over here, and let's get out of the way of the cops so I don't get cops again. And I think this area right about mm, here should be good. So, the game does not let you kill yourself. It's a bit unfortunate, but if you go into like your kill yourself section, it doesn't let you. But there's a very easy solution to that. There you go. I am dead. So, that's usually what I do. I'll just get a sticky bomb or a grenade or something like that. Bop myself in the head. And then it's going to spawn me right next to my phantom, as you can see. And, uh, and it's pretty easy. So, this saves a pretty decent chunk of time on losing the cops. You don't need to worry about losing them at all. You just bop yourself in the head. Then we're going to enter our truck and, once again, go back to the location. So, pretty dang easy. We're just going to deliver the long fin to the docks, which I love to do. So so we got one mile and that's it. I mean, this is how easy it is to do a lot of these missions. We're just going to run you over. Hello, good sir. Goodbye. Now, a fun thing once again is once we deliver this to the docks, I'm just going to go into a new lobby. Instead of calling in my sparrow, flying it over to the Kosatka, you just save time by spawning in your new lobby. It's very easy to do this, especially because it's not like you're doing any missions in an invite only. So this is very easy to do. And so far, you can see I haven't really had to sweat any brain cells. I'm just chilling, doing these missions very easily and uh yeah that's what i really like about the kaioprika heist is you don't really need to sweat at all it is so easy to do this so here we go let's make our way around here that was pretty easy and we're gonna squeeze past the train oh boy keep going i'm not letting that train ruin my run all right so 0.6 miles to go and we're at our destination let's take this corner a bit wide so we don't need to worry yeah look at that beautiful cornering we got 0.5 miles, and hello, Mr. Car. I'm very sorry about your car, ma'am. <laughs> it's so fun just to, oh, oh, oh God, oh God. Okay, maybe, maybe I should just stick to driving <laughs> on the road. I was gonna say it's really fun to smash people off the road in the, uh, in the Phantom, but maybe I should focus a bit less smashy, a bit less crashy, and a bit more <laughs> delivery. Okay, now when it comes to this last bit here, it's a lot faster to just smash to the fence, but. I'll just do it the simple way and drive through here. Hooah! And done. Well, there you have it. That was pretty dang easy and delivered. So the long fin part is already done for this mission, as we can see. As soon as it says delivered, I always wait just because I don't like to make the mistakes. So heist prep complete. Find new session, invite only, and here we are. Once again, it's going to load me back into my Kosatka, which is obviously right at the docks here. And that's complete. So that's already the vehicle setup complete. That took us like four minutes, five minutes in total. Very easy to do. And now we're just going to run back up to the top level of our Kosatka and start the next one. Now, because we have the ruby necklace, we do have to get the plasma cutter, which is a bit unfortunate. I do think the bearer bonds mission is a lot easier just because of how you can complete it. But either way, it's still pretty fast to complete. We go to prep, we go to equipment, and we don't need the demolition charges. So we're going to start off with the plasma cutter. Very easy to do. Once again, we go to the back of our submarine, and we're going to go get into the Sparrow. Sparrow, here we go. So, it's pretty easy to do this part. The plasma cutter, it's a bit painful if you do it incorrectly, but I usually don't struggle. Struggle, Yes, I don't struggle all too much with the plasma cutter mission. Uh, the plasma cutter one we actually have is in a very close location to us, which is nice. So, we're just going to fly over there, and it uh, should be pretty dang easy to do. All right, 
I love this Sparrow though. This is definitely one of the best purchases in the game. Whether you're flying across the map fairly quickly, or you're just trying to, uh, you know, bombard a lot of things with missiles. The Sparrow is so cheap and easy to get. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, the Plasma Cutter mission is super, super easy from start to finish, really. All you need to do is take a picture of the planning board, which is always going to be the same thing. So you never have to kill anybody in this first area here. We're just going to fly a little bit further ahead and should be a good area right about here. I'm just going to land my helicopter right here. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so we're just going to run into the room over here. It does not matter if the camera's here or not, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to run right through. There you go. And now inside this room, you just got to take a picture of the board. We can see the board right here, so I'm going to get on my phone and take a picture of it get the whole board in the picture obviously oh looks like that didn't count let me try it again if this doesn't count i'll just move a little bit to the side let's see there you go send up a bell so pretty easy and now we can leave the room so that took us a whole 10 seconds and now we just gotta wait for pavel to speak to us forever and then we'll make our way to the next area now, when it comes to the plasma cutter locations, usually they're one of two areas. It's either like here or here. So I'm just gonna fly over towards, yeah, Rockford Hills. So whenever you're too fast, you can very easily just fly to the next area already. Uh, which is what we're gonna do. So, pretty easy so far. Now, when it comes to the plasma cutter, pl plasma cutter. Oh my God, my brain. I'm having a minor stroke. <laughs> but um, when it comes to the plasma cutter, it is very, very easy to do this part. You'll die if you don't do it correctly. But what I do is I just call them the speedo custom. When you load into a new session, it despawns your phantom wedge, which means you don't need to worry about that vehicle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly right over here to the Rockford Hills Plaza. And let's slow down our helicopter. There you go, a little bit. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna leave my helicopter right about here is where I like to leave it. Just far enough away that you don't need to worry about the bad guys that we're gonna deal with getting us. So then we're gonna go and call out our Vapid Speedo Custom, which is the vehicle I love to use. It's very easy, it's got some armored windows. So once we get our Vapid Speedo Custom, which spawns right over here, we are going to go get the plasma cutter, drive over to our helicopter and take off. Very easy to do and super simple. Even if we die, the good news is that I can always spawn in my buzzard as well through my interaction menu. So uh, either way, it's pretty easy. So we're just gonna squeeze on through here and we're just gonna blow this up. Hello, good sirs, how are you doing? So that was pretty easy. There you go, get our plasma cutter, drive away. And now we're just gonna kill these guys. Hello, goodbye, and there you go. I mean, you can see how easy it is to do this with the Speedo Custom. This is why I really like using the Speedo Custom. So we're just gonna place a couple mines here and here and get into our Sparrow. Here we go, we blew up one of the bad guys, and off we go! Oh my god, everybody's just blowing up. But that's it, that's all you have to do. And we're done. I mean, it is super, super easy to do this with the Speedo Custom. Even if you don't own the Speedo Custom, just pull out an Armored Kuruma. You'll have to call your mechanic, it takes like two seconds longer. It's just as easy to do it with an Armored Kuruma. If you don't own an Armored Kuruma and you're that poor, uh, I would guess just use a Duco Death. I mean, the Duco Death should be just as easy as well. But yeah, that's all you have to do. Now we're just gonna fly back over to the Kosatka and we'll be done. So once again, another very easy mission to complete. Now this one, any of the ones where you have to deliver the part to the location, you are not going to want to fast travel by going into an invite only lobby. It's going to lose you time rather than save you time. So you're just gonna fly there with your Sparrow or your, your Oppressor and it'll be just as easy. So here we are making our way back to the Kosatka. Pretty dang easy, and we're just gonna slow down a bit so we can obviously get into it. And here we go. Boop, and done. So that was pretty dang easy so far. No problem whatsoever. Now we're just gonna make our way once again back into the front, and that's gonna be it. So this is how easy it is to really do the Kayaprika heist. It really is super duper easy. Um, but there you go, heist prep complete. Takes a little bit of time to load, unfortunately. But after it's done loading, we're gonna go up to the front of our Kosatka and let's start up the next one, which should be the fingerprint cloner, if I'm not mistaken. Fingerprint cloner is a pretty easy one to do overall. Here we are, prep, equipment, and fingerprint cloner. Okay, let's go back and go to the warehouse. 
Now, the only one that's really a pain, to be honest, is the weapons. Because sometimes when you source your weapons, you get the Meriwether helicopter one. If you get the helicopter, I'll break into it in a bit, but you're just going to skip it. You're going to go into a new lobby, and it's going to completely skip that mission. It's very easy to do, and it it saves a lot of time. So we're going to go to the warehouse. Once again, it looks like we actually got a pretty decent spawn for this. So we're just going to make our way over there. Going to make sure we don't crash our helicopter, because if we do, um, I'm going to load into a new lobby and uh, start the mission again. But here we go. Whoa! All right, we're fine. We are all good. Let's go over the bridge. I could go under the bridge, but I don't really trust this helicopter enough to do that. So let's just do that and slow down here we are now this one unlike the plasma cutter we are going to have to kill people uh okay uh, <laughs> my my luck all right there you go we're fine so cameras they are gonna see us honestly don't care oh god oh god i thought my helicopter blade was gonna chop me up for a second but we're fine even if the camera sees us all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just shoot these guys to the ground it's pretty easy to do get you there you go and then we just gotta kill these two here and dead pretty easy to do overall. They're all dead. So now we just gotta wait for Pavel to let me on the computer. The blood, blood soaking computer. Hoo Look at that. We got a woman. Oh, all right. I'm allowed to hack it already. Sometimes it takes a very long time for the game to allow you to hack the laptop, but obviously this hack is very easy. P-A-N-T-H-E. Uh, there you go. All right. Pretty dang easy to do. And now we just gotta make our way back to the door. And that's it. I mean, that's really how easy it is to do that first part. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into our Sparrow. We're gonna go to the archive location, which as we can see is right in the smack dab center of the map. And uh, what we're gonna do is on our way back, I'm going to call in my Kosatka, and it's going to save me a lot of time on the, uh, the delivery part is what you'll see. And not only is it gonna save me time on the delivery, but as well calling in my Kosatka is going to save me a lot of time on the next mission, which is going to be the cutting torch. So very easy stuff so far, as you can see, no sweating. And this is why I really do, as I said, like the Kaiaprika Heist. You can speedrun it, or you can just do it like me and be pretty chill and have no problems whatsoever and do it quite easily. So here we are. Let's just slow down my helicopter. Let me get it in the direction we're going to take off, which is this way. And let's land. Okay, hopefully that doesn't chop off my blade. Seems like it's not going to, though. So we're just going to pull out my gun really quick. And there's CCTV, as Pavel did say. So what we're going to do is we're just going to shoot this one off. There you go. And then we're going to shoot this one off, and there you go. Now the CCTV does not know I'm here. We're going to get inside of the building, and the only reason you do want to destroy the CCTV for this specific one is because you will have to deal with the annoyance of the, uh, the guys chasing you on cars if you do set off the camera, and it can be annoying when you're trying to get in your helicopter. Usually the fingerprint cloner spawns around here, which it did, so pretty easy, and now we're just going to make our way back to the exit of the building, and that's it. I mean, it is so dang easy to do these missions. You'd think they'd put CCTV inside of the building, too, but I guess that's not very important to, uh, to Mr. Cayo Borrico, El Rubio. So, we're just gonna get back into the helicopter, which is right here, and, uh, that's it. I mean, once again, these missions are so dang easy. So here we are, get in the helicopter, and I do gotta be a little careful when taking off not to crash, but should be fine. Here we go, and off we are. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my services and Kosatka, and I should be able to request it, and when we request it, it should spawn right in front of us, toward a, sort of towards the beach over here, which it did. Very, very easy to do. So that's gonna save me a bit of time, rather than flying all the way down to the Meriwether docks, which I don't need to do anymore. I can just fly right over towards where my uh, yacht is, and you're gonna see the Kosatka pop out of the water in just a moment, right about, I don't actually see it, but it's there. I know it's here. All right, I'm gonna start slowing down because I know it's right about here. There you go, and done. Pretty easy. So once again, very, very easy mission so far. It's only taken me probably about 30 minutes to do these, uh, which is not a long time. I don't actually know how long it's taken me to be completely honest, but no problem whatsoever. So we've completed that. We've got two more missions to go. We've got the Meriwether, or not the Meriwether, but the weapons, and we also have the plas- or not the plasma, the cutting torch. So, we're not gonna do the cutting torch yet. We are going to do the painful one, which is the weapons. Well, it depends what we get. If you get a building address, you're fine when it comes to the weapons, which I guess we're gonna find out in just a moment. So we're gonna go to prep, weapon loadout. I personally like, I think it's marksman. No, no, it's uh, 
No, I'm stupid. Crack shot. There you go. I don't know why my brain couldn't think of that. So we actually got a good one. We got the Penrith building, or I like to call it the penis building. But the Penrith building is an easy one. It's really only if you get the one that says follow the Merryweather helicopter. What you're going to do is you're going to press online. You're going to go to find a new session and do an invite only session. And then you'll load back into your Kosatka. Obviously, you'll have your spawn location at the Kosatka. And that's all you're going to do. It's very easy to complete it like that. And that's what I personally do because it's very, very simple. So we are going to make our way all the way over to the Penrith building which is directly in like the center of the city and uh once again complete this fairly fast oh god oh god all right we're fine <laughs> we're fine flying this helicopter very low to the ground is always a bit sketchy now you have two options when entering the Penrith building you can either fly up to the top of the building and enter through the top roof or you can go through the bottom and exit through the bottom. Personally, I like doing the roof better. I think it's a lot easier. So that's what I would suggest to do. Um, but you do have to be a little worried because when you exit the top of the building, there are helicopters that will spawn on you. So do keep that in mind. Now, I think the building we're going to is this one. Oh no, it's that one down there. I think it is. It must be. Here we are. Let us go down. Yeah, it is this building here. Okay. Let us lower. Come on, check that waypoint for me. There you go. And now we just got to get over to here. And let's see, I'm just going to land my helicopter right here. Let me turn it this way, though, because I do have to leave off the building with some speed so I don't get shot up by the helicopter. So leave the door open. It's in the perfect location. This part is very easy. You have two options. You can either get in here and not alert the guards, or you can alert the guards. I don't really care too much. I just run in here and alert the guards. It's pretty easy to do. There you go. There you go. Ow. No, no you don't. No you don't. Ooh, and pretty dang easy. Just eat some snacks. Let's make our way over here. There you go. There is a dude in here. You don't really need to worry about this guy too much, but I'll kill him just because I can. There you go. You're dead. And let's get this guy over here as well. Ooh, and I don't know if he's dead yet. Is he dead? Uh, well, I think he is. Yeah, that guy is definitely dead. All right, well, we got two more guys. Pretty easy to deal with and dead. Okay, there you go. A little bit of pain, but nothing too much I can't handle. And obviously we have snacks, so just got to search the office for the gun locker. And then we got to hack this computer over here. Let me hack the computer. Yes. Okay. Hacking this computer is pretty simple. Uh, it's a little bit annoying to find the numbers sometimes, but it's pretty dang simple overall. All we need to do is look for 66, 49, 33, 75. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna look for 66 as of now. Uh, I don't see it up here. Okay, don't see it here. Don't see it here. Don't see it here. Don't see it here. Really? Where the heck is it? Oh, got. Oh, no, it's right there. Okay, I saw it. I did see it. All right, well, that was pretty easy. So now we got the locker. Now we just gotta run back here and open the gun locker. Hua! and just steal our weapons. Now, funny enough, I do not see my sniper that I'm using as weapons, but I'm not gonna nitpick. I'll, I'm still happy that I can use the sniper. Okay, so let's make our way to the exit. I'm pretty sure to go to the roof, it is this way. It should be right on the D-pad, which it was. And now we're just gonna get inside my sparrow. And because, as I said, I have my sparrow positioned correctly, all we need to do is leave, which we did there. So pretty dang easy to do, and now we're fine. So once again, as you can see, very simple missions. You just have to have a little bit of foresight on how you're gonna do them. And that's really just about it. Because I have my uh, Kosatka already at the beach, it's a very, very quick travel to get there. And all we have left is the cutting torch and we are already ready to rob El Rubio. I mean, that is how easy it is to complete these missions. So I just really enjoy doing this heist because it gives me something to do and it's so easy to do it. I'm glad that Rockstar did make these missions very compatible as a solo player myself. So we're just gonna make our way over here and done okay that was pretty easy there you go okay so we've completed everything all we have left is the cutting torch i always save the cutting torch for last not because it's the hardest but because it's the easiest it is literally just steal the cutting torch and you're done so i really like the cutting torch it's very easy to do and I would always suggest to save it for last just because it is the easiest one. So we're inside our Kosatka once again, making our way to the front. Here we go. And cutting torch time, baby. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. I'm going to kill myself now. <laughs> if you hear a gunshot, that was me. All right, so equipment. 
cutting torch, and we just gotta go to the construction site. All the construction sites are pretty dang similar. Some of them are easier than the others, but they don't really make too much of a difference. You just gotta put on a hard hat, and that's literally it. So, off we go. Um, does it tell me which one we're going to? Unfortunately not. I have to actually leave the Kosatka for it to tell me. But, uh, it looks like the one we're going to is the easiest one, actually, in my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think the one we're going to is the one near the Vinewood buildings. And if it is, I love that one because of how small the location is. So, let's keep on going. Go up a bit. Don't want to crash, obviously. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the helicopter right now because I don't want to don't wanna combust in the flames. But here we go. Alright, yes, it is the one I was thinking. Nice, I love this one. This one is super duper easy. Alright, so, the cutting torch. Just put on the hard hat. That's literally all you gotta do. You have a couple options. It's either blow them all up to smithereens, or just get the hard hat, which is right off to the side here. So, I'm going to land my helicopter right here. There you go. Very easy to do. Now we're just gonna run right over here and put on this hard hat. Now, unfortunately, you can see that there is a... A bit of a bug with the hard hat. It's a pain to... Yeah, you have to, like, run back and forth to it sometimes to get it on. But it's pretty easy. It saves you a lot of time because now I can just literally do whatever I want. Clearly, the dude in armor is not going to steal your weaponry. No. All right, it's not in that one. Uh, let's see. Is it in this one over here? Yes, it is. All right. Well, that was pretty dang simple. Thank you for the plasma cutter. And now we leave. I mean, that's it. That's all the cutting torches. Goodbye. You just got to make sure you don't touch any of the guys or they will get mad at you and start shooting you for some reason because you know that makes sense, clearly. But that's it. We're done. Now we just got to leave and, uh, and yeah, you guys all stink. Losers! Ha <laughs> ha! All right. Once again... This is why the Kosatka and the Kayaprika Heist are so easy. I would highly suggest you invest in the Sparrow, and I would also highly suggest you invest in getting the Kosatka. These are really the only two things you need for doing the Kayaprika Heist. Everything else is useless. I mean, that's literally all I've been doing. And maybe an Armored Pruma for that one Plasma Cutter mission. But apart from that, you really don't need it. So, uh, yeah, pretty dang simple. I can already see our Kosatka, so we're just going to fly back there, start up the heist, and that's it, really. Now, I'm going to be honest, I haven't done this heist in probably a solid month so we'll see how rusty i am at it hopefully i don't make any mistakes because i know they changed how the guard works and now if you leave any dead bodies they will see them so you do have to be a bit careful at that aspect but i should hopefully be able to do it first try so i guess we're gonna find out either way pretty dang simple heist prep complete and that's it so there you go all right now we just get to start up the heist so let's make our way all the way to the front here we are and let's do this. All right. You have finished all mandatory prep work. Imagine there was something was like that in real life. It just told you finished all prep work. All right, approach. Oh, wait, that's right. I have to start it. I always forget I have to start it. All right, let's put on super heavy armor. Yep, there you go. And play. Now, I could make a mistake and have the guards get angry at me. I guess we'll find out. Here we are. So approach vehicle long fin. Infiltration point, north dock compound entry point drainage tunnel escape point it doesn't really matter so we'll just do the airstrip time of day i don't really think it matters for daytime obviously going to put on suppressors for my weapon and that's it all right ready to play so we're ready to do the heist let's try and do this first try because i don't want to have to redo this but um what we're going to do is we're going to take the long fin all the way over towards the airstrip to begin with. It's pretty dang simple to do this. Uh, it can take a couple attempts. And actually, this is usually how I do do it now that they've changed how the heist works. It's a lot easier to go to the airstrip and get your secondary target. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to speed all the way over there first. Keep on going and speed. All right, going to the airstrip. Now, I could have checked what secondary loot was at this area here. North dock, I think this is, or main dock. But it doesn't really matter what's at this dock here because it's just pointless in my opinion. You don't need it down to the fact that we already have the uh, coke spawn at the end. So if I didn't get coke spawns where we were, I probably would have checked out that dock. It would have taken me a bit more time. But I don't really need to, and it only takes me about 10 more seconds to drive the boat over here as it is. So we're just going to slow down, put on the brake so it doesn't coast away, and there you go. Pretty dang simple. So let's just climb off the boat, 
make our way over to the first area. Now I use crack shot because of the fact you have a sniper and a pistol. It's great in both ways. The sniper is fantastic for clearing anybody. For example, this guard over here, I can just bomb him in the head. There you go. He's dead. Very, very easy to do that. So now we're just going to make our way all the way over here and steal the coke. Now, you're going to see there's going to be a jeep that makes its way down this road at some point. I'm going to want to clear that jeep, so I might just wait for it, but you want to wait for that jeep specifically because it can see dead bodies, so that is something you have to keep an eye on. But let's make our way over here. Once again, I'm going to keep an eye on when that jeep makes its way through. If we see it coming through at any point, I'm going to try and clear it. But let's make our way over here and steal the coke. Yes, oh yeah. Now, I do want to double check and see if there was coke above us, because if there was, I don't even need to go to the other area. So let's see. Thank you. Pretty easy. And there you go. That's $242,000. Uh, was that coke up here? I'm just going to jump up on this, and it looks like... Oh, I'm stuck on this. I can't tell. My camera's not moving. Um, hmm. Well... I'm just going to check. It's very easy to check anyway. It only takes a couple seconds. So we're just going to get on the excavation tool over here, the forklift, and we're going to pick up these crates and bring them over. I do think that is coke. I might be wrong, but I actually do think that is what it is. So let me just grab this and let me go over here, bring this up and done. Pretty dang easy. Okay. Go over here, go up and let's see. Am I correct? Uh, oh, it is. Oh, that's super easy. Okay, we don't even need to go to the other area. Why do we have so many coke spawns? It's not normal to get this many spawns, but um, I'm not going to complain. So let's do this, and here we are. Let's grab all this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, if I didn't have the coke spawn here and I had to go to the other side of the airstrip, it's also very, very simple to do. All you're going to do is you're going to clear those two guards, and then you're going to wait for the jeep to come down, and you're going to clear that jeep. If you don't wait for the jeep, what's going to end up happening is the jeep is going to see your dead bodies that you've left there and then uh, you're going to be in some serious doo-doo because it it does go down this little road here so do keep that in mind in fact you can see the jeep right there that is the guy you're going to have to clear when he comes down here so it only takes like a couple seconds to wait for him maybe you'll have to wait like a minute but it, it does save a huge amount of time we got pretty lucky with our coke spawn so i don't need to worry about that but just do keep that in mind now when it comes to your boat make sure that you park it right at the edge of the bank but not on the bank because if you leave it on the bank itself it's going to slide off and go all the way into like the center of the ocean so uh i usually like to park it right at the edge and you can see like here and then you don't have to worry at all but that's it we've already gotten the main loot so we got four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars worth of loot here and now we're just going to turn our boat around pretty dang simple to do and easy okay so now comes the easier part which is just getting into el rubio's compound getting our main target and leaving Hello, Mr. Boats, but yeah, let's do this. So as you can see, no sweat whatsoever so far. No stress, very easy to do. And this is again why the heist is so easy. So the only part I might mess up is the guard seeing dead bodies at this point. The main guy you want to clear is the juggernaut a lot of the times. So that's the guy that I kind of try to focus because of the fact that the juggernaut can notice dead bodies because he walks around the entire compound but usually you don't even need to kill guards honestly and that's how i do it you don't really need to kill guards when completing the heist you just make your way through pretty fast so that's what i'm gonna try and do let's keep on going all the way around now the good news is if i do make a mistake i can just restart it it doesn't really matter i might not get the elite challenge but apart from that it doesn't really matter if i make a mistake because I can just restart it, and as long as I have my secondary loot first, and then I enter here, it's easy as heck. So, let's make our way right over here, and let's get over towards the drainage tunnel, jump out of our boat, and... Oh, 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 uh, my character is not swimming the way I want him to. Here we go. Alright, let's put on our rebreather so I don't start dying of oxygen, and down here... All right, well, that's it. We've already done 99% of everything we need to do. We just got to get through El Rubio's compound and get out. So, cutting the grate. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Okay, how many of you have listened to me making weird noises? <laughs> okay, let's cut through this, cut through this, and that was pretty easy. I always suck at cutting through the grate. There's people that tell me faster ways to do it. I'm too lazy. I just do it like this. It works. It gets the job done. Now we're just going to make our way up and down and up and down. Ooh, Boop, 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 and done. There you go. We've cut through the grate. We've completed that. And now we just have to make our way 
through the final part. So swimming! Oh man, I love swimming through sewage. Oh, oh man, oh, it makes me so happy to swim through sewage. Oh man, oh yeah. Oh, the tingling my senses. Okay, we've completed that. Now let's do this. I'm gonna try and not make any mistakes. I don't remember the exact pathing the guards have. I probably should have watched my own video to remember. As I said, I haven't done this heist in a while, but I think I know how it works. I'm pr I know the pathing pretty well. It's just which guards I need to clear, but I shouldn't really need to clear any guards as long as I do this correctly. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So here we go. Let us speed. So I'm gonna run past this guy over here. And then the only guard, if I remember correctly, you need to clear is this one right here. There you go, clear that guard. And then I'm gonna make my way all the way over here. Keep on going, keep on going, and up, okay. And then we're gonna run all the way around this way. As you can see, no guards I'm running into yet. As long as you follow this pathing, you'll be completely fine, especially on the timing that it has. So we're just gonna run over here. And we're going to ignore this guard right here. Just walk past him. There you go. That's easy, as you can see. And this guard over here, we're allowed to clear. This one's pretty easy. So we're going to pull out our gun for this guy. And we're just going to wait. And boop. There you go. Very easy. And now we're just going to make our way up here. And apparently I alerted the guards. Well, um, I don't really know how I alerted the guards. I'm going to be honest. I didn't really make a mistake there. That was just the game being uh, a bit of a meanie to me. But the good news is that all we need to do is get out of the compound at this point. So even though I did make a bit of a mistake, I should still be able to do this. All I need to do is make my way to the underground vault, which means we can hack right here. Especially because I'm only on normal difficulty, it's pretty easy to do this hack. Uh, so let's just do this really quick. Oh, there you go. First one's done. Only well, took me about 10 seconds. Okay, and let's do this one. A uh, boop, boop, boop. Okay, I think that looks about good. There you go, second one done. And we got the final one to go, which is this one. Boop, and boop, and boop. That looks about good there. There you go, pretty easy. I usually just do it by eyesight. I think it's pretty easy to line them all up. But there you go, print clone successful. And now all we need to do is exit. It was a bit unfortunate though that we really got caught there. I guess one of the bullets must have been heard by one of the guards down below. Now there is a guard over here. You gotta clear that guy, there you go. But that's pretty easy to do. Now we have to do is burn the lock. And since we haven't opened that door over there, the guards can't walk through that door, which is pretty nice. So we're just gonna cut through here and make our way over to the ruby necklace. Now if I do end up failing this, I'll just restart. It only takes a couple seconds as it is. So let's just cut through this. And we should only need like one more cut. We should be done. Oh, maybe another half a cut. There you go. Okay, pretty easy. So we have a $1.535 million take. Not too bad. And now we're just going to make our way back up. Goodbye, stinky guard. That's it. So we've done all this. Now all we have to do is leave. Now, as I said, unfortunately, we are in a bit of a poor circumstance when it comes to this situation here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to make our way down over here. Keep on going. And let's see. So there should be a guard somewhere around here. There you go. That guard is dead. There's a guard there. That guard is dead. Okay, pretty dang easy so far. That guard is dead. Oh my god. Oh my god. I did not realize that guy was going to mow me so hard. But we do have snacks, so let's just eat these snacks and cut through the gate key. There you go. And done. That was pretty easy. As you can see, we did make a bit of a mistake, but it's pretty easy to make your way through. We only lost about $10,000 so far. And once we've gotten to this gate, it's a pretty dang easy finishing part. All we need to do is jump off into the water and we're done. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty dang easy heist. Even though I made a mistake, honestly, I shouldn't have had that happen though. I think that every now and then the heist just bugs out and a guard hears something that he shouldn't have. Um, but either way, all we need to do is clear the Jeep, which you're going to see in just a moment pull up to us. It's uh, right here, so we're just going to clear this Jeep. Oh, well, there you go, there you go. I'm not actually going to use the Jeep. I did not realize there was a motorcycle here too. So we're just going to get on the motorcycle, and there you go, and now we're done. That's it. It's pretty dang easy to do this. Let's just knock this guy onto the ground. A goodbye. And there you have it. I mean, that's the whole Kaioprika heist. It is really, really simple. I know uh, it can be tricky at some times, but even if you make a mistake like I did, it's still pretty chill and pretty easy to complete. So we're just gonna speed on through here, get off the bike onto the water, and uh, that's it. Now we're just gonna start swimming. So let me put on my rebreather. There you go. 
And let's just swim to the exits. Hopefully El Rubio is not able to hit me with the helicopter, uh, but we should be fine. I don't even see his helicopter here as of yet, so we should be completely fine. Keep on going, keep on going. Okay, and we're good. Okay, that was pretty dang easy. So I'm not sure if we're going to get the elite challenge. We did get full loot bag, and we got the primary target, and everything's good. But I think one of the elite challenges is sometimes do not get detected, which we, we definitely did. Now, when it comes to leaving the island, it's pretty dang easy. All you're going to do is you're going to swim down through here. People call it like the elephant bone or something like that. I just swim down through here because it's pretty easy to find this crevasse. And once you swim down through here, there you go, done. So we've completed the heist. That is the entire Cayo Perico heist completed. No problems, nothing actually happened that was really that bad. So let's see how much money we were able to make in total. We uh, obviously had to pay some of it in fencing fees and stuff like that, but should be pretty dang fine overall. Thank you for the check and, and, and passed. Nice. So we got platinum, oh yeah. <laughs> I, th I wonder why we got platinum. Maybe it's because I was the only person doing it. So we took on 1.335 all to ourselves and then also ah yeah that was the one elite challenge we failed so unfortunately we didn't get the 50,000 extra but you know what we still got 1.335 million very easy to complete even on normal mode I think the heist is pretty dang easy so there you have it I don't know exactly how long this took me to complete I'd probably say around 40 to 50 minutes but uh yeah hopefully this helps you out and uh it's pretty dang simple so at the end of the day, the heist is still really dang easy in my opinion to do, even with the guard changes, and yeah, there you go. So we made, as I said, a total of 1.335 million. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.